Every month, a host of indie games look for your support through crowdfunding. We scour through all the indie games on Kickstarter and bring you our top five recommendations each month. Before we jump into the month of September, let's have a recap of last month's recommendations. Neon City Riders was our first recommendation last month, so we are happy to see that the retro-inspired brawler was fully backed. We can expect a full release around April next year. First person psychological horror game The Lighthouse was also fully funded. In fact, the game almost achieved over three times more than its original target. A full release is expected later this year. The idea of a fully customizable zombie apocalypse sim obviously proved popular as Dead Matter achieved 500% funding. If you back the game, then beta access should be coming later this year with a full release around the beginning of 2018. Epitasis is a picturesque exploration game set amidst a mysterious planet. The game must have caught the eye of some players as it just cleared its $10,000 goal and should be getting a full release around June next year. Our final recommendation from August quite literally smashed every single goal it set, achieving a backing of nearly 1,000% of its original goal. The highly successful backing of the online RPG RE Legend means that the game will now be getting a release on all consoles including the Nintendo Switch. So with all of last month's titles hitting their backing target, let's get into September's recommendations. The Iron Oath takes everything we love about old school turn-based RPGs, sprinkles in some stunning pixel graphics and bolsters it with a modern in-depth system to bring an epic fantasy title. The game is set in a dark fantasy world made up of nine contrasting regions, all of which have their own cities which can be overtaken, destroyed and rebuilt. Guiding your group of adventurers across these forsaken lands won't be easy, not only will you need to survive the combat, but you'll also need to effectively manage your guild from finances and resources all the way to allies. Every decision you make can have a dramatic effect on both your team and the world that surrounds you. As previously mentioned, all combat in the Iron Oath plays out in a turn-based fashion, which, as you'd expect, requires effective planning and preparation if you have any chance to succeed. If fully funded, the game is expected in the summer of 2019, you can grab yourself a copy with some extra goodies for $15. Or if you fancy jumping into the closed beta, then that's going to cost you $50. And you have until the 8th of September to help the Iron Oath reach its $45,000 goal. Lona is a vibrant point and click adventure that dips its toes into the mental illness pool. The game is set around the premise of trying to escape the pressures of everyday jobs and to do this Lona paints her difficulties into abstract pieces of art. It's these paintings that act as the stages or levels in Lona and each level has two sides to it, a light side and a dark side. Although the game plays out in point and click fashion, its focus is more on the narrative of the game rather than those damn near impossible puzzles we've all been stuck on. If this abstract artistic adventure has perked your interest, then you can grab both a copy of the game and beta access for just $15. And if fully funded, then Lona should get a full release early next year.
Okinawa Rush holds no punches, showing off its 90 inspired platforming routes. The game is set in Japan, where a ruthless cult of ninjas have been tearing through the lands. The group known as the Black Mantis have now found their way to Okinawa, where they loot and kill anyone standing in their way, including the family of legendary training scroll Hiro Yoshima, which is probably the worst thing they could have ever done. To succeed in this revenge story, you'll need to master the moves and summon supernatural abilities to overcome the brutally challenging gameplay. A full playable demo is available now on the Okinawa Rush website, which I strongly urge you to go and play. But be warned, once you have played this game, you'll find it very hard not to back it. At the moment, Okinawa Rush is in development for just PCs, but the developers are working closely to try and get a console port. However, we don't know which consoles as of yet. If this 90s inspired revenge action platformer has you interested, then you have until the 13th of September to help Okinawa Rush hit its £10,000 goal. Initiative Red Dawn is currently being referred to as a modern Kerbal Space program. While this is ultimately a strategy game, it stays very close to its aerospace and scientific roots. The game features a ton of fully licensed technology from the likes of NASA, SpaceX and Virgin Galactic. Aside from building a thriving colony, you'll need to manage how it runs, where to spend the money and what resources you see fit for use. The end goal of the single player is to create and manage a colony on Mars with over 25,000 inhabitants, all of which require no resources being sent from Earth. Initiative Red Dawn is currently being developed for PC, but with its strict strategy and management gameplay, that's probably going to be the best place to play it. $20 will bag yourself a copy of the game, along with some extra perks. With a full release expected at the end of this year, you have until the 22nd of August to help Initiative Red Dawn hit its $55,000 goal. The Devil's 8 is one of the most stylish games I've seen for a long time. The game takes the classic boss rush gameplay and fuses it with a pumping electronic soundtrack, embedding elements of rhythm battling into its gameplay. The title pretty much sums up what the game is. You have to descend the 8 circles of hell, facing off against a demon at each circle. Each boss comes with their own unique soundscape and punishing attacks, which you'll need to carefully study if you have any chance to survive. The closest comparison to The Devil's 8 that we can think of is Fury, a boss rush game that was available for PS Plus a little while back. The Kickstarter campaign for The Devil's 8 doesn't start until the 20th of September, so funding goals and pledges haven't yet been confirmed. But we recommend you check the game out when its page goes live on the 12th of September. That wraps up our 5 recommended Kickstarter games for the month of September. None of the games in this list are guaranteed to be fully backed and reach a full release. But if you like any of the games we have mentioned, then we recommend you check out their Kickstarter page. And if you like what you see, then why not help the developers by throwing them a bit of cash. You can also bag yourself a copy of the game with a few extra perks. All links to the games mentioned in this video are below. And to keep up to date with other indie game news, previews and reviews, be sure to subscribe to Indie Credible. <laughs>